The news I got from the doctors was this was really serious. They were talking about the amputation of toes. Then they were talking about the amputation of my leg from knee down. Then they were trying to ensure I had life. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the most recent episode of Barstool Sports Coach Prime, in which Deion Sanders details what exactly happened that led to the amputation of two of his toes. This whole story began because of some initial pathology to Sanders' toes. We could see in this picture here, he has something we call a hammer toe of his second toe here on his left foot. And I believe in another video, I think they also talked about how he had a bunion, which is kind of this extra growth you can have on the side of the big toe. But this second toe that's sticking up over the top, that's called a hammer toe. And these hammer toes can lead to a lot of increased pain and problems at the toe joints. So Dion underwent a surgery to try to correct and fix this, involving the second and the first toe. Lauren was changing my bandages daily on my foot and she said, coach, uh, your toes are black. So that's the first sign of concern here for Deion Sanders. Basically, whenever you have ischemic damage or damage to a part of your body because of poor blood supply, that skin can start to necrose and die. And when it starts to die because of loss of blood supply, it turns initially a little bit kind of dusky gray, bluish colored, but then can start to turn black because of a loss of oxygen to that tissue. When that tissue loses oxygen, that tissue starts to die and necrose and becomes extremely painful. In this picture here, we can actually see one of those pins that's still in place there on his second toe with some of the wrapping around that first and second toe. So this would have been from his initial surgery back earlier in the fall. It was a little discolored this morning and upon going to the hospital, we found out some really, 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 really severe thing. But uh, Doc is with me, so I'm gonna let Doc tell you better than I can. He's gonna have a procedure done a little later today. He has actually a blood clot, not in a vein, but it actually, that it's in located in the artery. So a blood clot in an artery, uh, you can lose your leg. Dion developed an arterial blood clot or arterial thrombosis, basically narrowing of the arteries in his leg that are delivering oxygenated blood to the rest of his tissue. Next, we'll talk about the effects of those blood clots and what in the world is going on in this picture. But first, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video. Did you know that the average person loses around one liter of sweat per hour of exercise? And with that sweat, you can lose electrolytes that are necessary for your body's optimal function. The sponsor of today's video, Element, is here to help you replenish those electrolytes in the right way. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that features everything your body needs and none of the stuff that it doesn't. Electrolyte balance is key for a number of our body's most important functions, from firing of nerves to contraction of muscle fibers. And when we lose those important electrolytes, our bodies can suffer from things like muscle cramping and fatigue. Element contains a science-backed formula of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. And there's no added artificial ingredients or extra sugar. Element also has the trust of professional athletes as the official hydration partner of Team USA Weightlifting and a number of Olympic athletes. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack. If you head to drinklmnt.com slash brianmd, all you have to do is pay five bucks for shipping. You can sample all their flavors and try it out risk-free before making that final purchase. So try some today by heading to the link in the description below. And thank you again to Element for sponsoring today's video. With our biodigital anatomy tool here, I've highlighted the veins and arteries of the lower leg. So veins are gonna be in blue, arteries in red. Arteries in red are taking oxygenated blood from the heart down to the rest of the tissues in the body to be used. Blue veins are returning that blood that's had oxygen taken from it back up to the lungs to get new oxygen in the lungs, go back into the heart and then recirculate. The biggest of these arteries up in the thigh is called the femoral artery. It's what you can feel if you kind of check your pulse just in the inside portion of your groin. So Dion had a clot or basically a plug in these arteries that are preventing oxygenated blood from getting to the rest of his leg. Sometimes what can also happen is these thrombosis that occur in the arteries can basically embolize off additional little clots that travel down to the smaller blood vessels like what you would see down in the toes and further occlude the blood vessels that we see distally in the extremity. So presumably there was death or ischemic damage to those toes and the tissue because of loss of blood supply, likely here stemming from, in this case, the clot in the blood vessels, preventing the blood from getting down to the tissue. Next is where things really started to get more severe for Sanders. They were talking about the amputation of toes. Then they were talking about the amputation of my leg from knee down. Then they were trying to ensure I had life. The reason that we have to talk about amputation whenever people have these ischemic digits or ischemic limbs 
is because that dead damaged tissue is a really strong site for potential infection. That infection can then spread throughout the rest of your body, which can subsequently be fatal, with something called sepsis. We try to do procedures to restore that blood flow, get rid of the clots, but sometimes that tissue can no longer be salvaged. And so we do an amputation to get rid of that potential source of infection because of how it can cause upstream effects. The compartment syndrome part of this coming up is also where the rest of the leg becomes more involved. So we called my mother about the clots and she informed me that we didn't know that my uncle died from blood clots. Um, my other uncle who's alive now almost passed last year from blood clots and she was diagnosed with blood clots a year ago. This is a really interesting thing because oftentimes we might not realize this family history until something like this happens and it forces us to ask these questions, family members talk to each other and realize, hey, yeah, some of this stuff has happened and there's definitely inherited conditions where people have a tendency to have more blood clots form than the average person. So an interesting side piece, something that's good to know now for his family history, you just hate to see this be the way that that gets discovered. So hearing that is something you don't want to hear while you're in the hospital in that state. So the operations proceeded. On day three, he ended up getting compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is a condition where you get increased pressure in the various compartments of either your arm or your leg. And that increased pressure can cause further damage to blood supply that can also cause necrosis and death of that muscle. Now with our anatomy tool, I've got all the muscles of the lower leg shown. And we divide these into four different compartments. There's the anterior compartment, which kind of sits on the front portion of our shin bone that helps to lift our ankle up. There's the superficial posterior, which is going to be part of that calf muscle complex. And then there's a lateral compartment, which are the muscles that help to evert our ankle, and then a deep posterior compartment. For a wide variety of reasons, the pressure can excessively build up in these compartments. And if you think of it sort of like a sausage with that casing around it, there's fascia that goes around each of those compartments, like that casing around a sausage. If that pressure builds up so much, it has nowhere to go and it cuts off blood supply, which can lead to death of that muscle. The treatment is something really gnarly called a fasciotomy, where the doctors actually go in and cut down that fascia to expose the underlying muscle and basically relieve that pressure. This is a true emergency for saving the limb. Here in the video, you can see this one image where we can clearly see that skin split apart, where he's had that fasciotomy with likely some skin grafting already over that in place. In this other video, you can see a more clear picture of it. Right there is gonna be where they perform that fasciotomy, where you basically cut through the skin, cut through that lining of the compartments to relieve the pressure in the leg. Okay, so they had to get in there. They had to get in there, and they got in there. Oh my God, Dan. Yeah, yeah, so they took the skin off here to put it here. Here what he's saying is they took a skin graft from the front of his thigh and they use that to cover up that defect. Basically, they kind of scrape along the surface of the skin, poke tiny little holes in that skin so they can stretch it out, and then they graft that over the part where they did this fasciotomy, which is what he's explaining now. But that left this whole thing raw. <laughs> the skin from here is now is here. On these sides. So covering up those two fasciotomy sites because of that compartment syndrome treatment. Of course, ultimately they had to amputate those two toes because they were no longer able to salvage it. They couldn't get blood supply there. And like I said, you worry about how infection can spread to the rest of the body. And so eventually you have to amputate and remove those toes. But in this case, you're always lucky enough to be able to not have to take more of the leg, not have to take more of the foot. They were able to intervene soon enough that while it still is bad and challenge, they only had to take the toes rather than having to take more of the leg or just the foot. I want to finish up by playing my favorite part of this clip. Take a listen. The devil wanted to mess with my mobility, but he, he couldn't mess with my ability because my voice carries, my voice challenges, my voice changes things. My voice is what makes me who I am, just my voice protruding. And it was crazy. I love Dion's message here about the importance of your ability rather than your disability. My primary specialty before I did my sports medicine training was physical medicine rehabilitation, where we learned how to take care of patients with disabilities, with spinal cord injuries, paralysis, brain injuries, strokes, things like that. And the big emphasis of that field is to try to help these patients focus on that ability rather than the disability, because we all have that ability somewhere within us 
no matter what we've been through in life and what we may have suffered from a medical perspective. And I love Dion's message about that, that it doesn't matter what that disability may be, you still have that ability to tap into to make a difference in the world. These pro athletes are humans just like the rest of us. Their bodies are human just like the rest of us. They go through the same other medical things that we forget about because while they're young and playing their sports, they tend to be really healthy. But this type of stuff happens, it's human nature. And I really appreciate Barstool and Dion for giving us this insight. And it's something that we typically don't see in the world of sports, the emotion, the honesty, and some additional wisdom about how to live your life and move forward with things after you've been through a terrible experience. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.